All right, welcome back for another episode of the Young Pro Podcast. I'm Ethan Montang, and I'm joined today with my co-host, Dustin Kupka, and we are lucky to interview one of my good buddies, David Soule. He is... <laughs> Nineteen years old, he quit his sales job to pursue his dreams of being an entrepreneur. He's now a social media manager, has been traveling the world, and is looking into starting some of his uh, online businesses. And we are super excited to get into his story. So thank you so much um, from coming from my house to our office. So yeah, we can uh, <laughs> interview you today, man. How you doing, dude? Dude, I feel great. I mean, I think this year is going to be one of the most impactful years of my life so far. Um, I, I can't even foresee all the blessings that are coming in. I'm just excited to be around professionals and successful people like you guys. So that's 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 my main outlook on life right now. I'm around some of the brightest minds and it's it's 10xing my growth. So awesome. we all kind of know what you're doing here, but do you kind of want to give an idea of why <laughs> you're living with me and, and Tyler at this moment and what that why you even made that decision to do that? <laughs> yeah so um yeah so we're in asia basically and not now currently this is this, <laughs> this is this is, this is, back. is iowa this is a couple of weeks ago months ago i'm on the phone with my mom ethan's in the back of the car he's like hey like he's talking to my mom and uh we're just going over all this stuff and he's like your son should definitely move in with me and my mom's just like okay because she's like i don't want you in asia so I moved in with Ethan when we got back, and from there, we've just been grinding. We've been doing 75 hard. We've just been trying to get our life. Like I'm looking at this like an incubation period where we're just putting in all this work, and then it's just going to bloom when the summer comes around, like an incubation period. I know that's a little weird of a word choice, but I think it's I think it describes it very well. And I think it shows like I when, you know, me and Dustin met, I kind of latched on to his personality and his experience. And I think it speaks volumes for being 19 years old. He decided to trade his time, uh, leverage his time for and I'm leveraging my experience. So he's been driving me around. He's been cooking for me. He's going to my business meetings. Uh, we're working out together and he's just spending as much amount of mass it's amounts of time with somebody who is like kind of accomplished where he's trying to go. And dude, I was I, not doing that at 19. <clears throat> I guess I have some questions, right? Yeah. So where's your birthday too? Oh, up. tomorrow. Right. Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. Turns 20. So it turns 20. 20. Yes. 20 years old. 20 <laughs> years old. It's crazy. Working for free. Working for... I pay for his food, but working for free. But just grinding out, getting around the, the world of what we live, right? Every yeah. day. So I, I got to... Let's step back here because... I mean, I know a little bit about yeah. your story and stuff, and I've you know from Ethan and what he's told me. But I'm, I'm just looking at a dude that's you know hanging out with Ethan. How that happens, I don't know. I mean, this whole social world, yeah. media world. I just want to hold know from the start, man. Like where you kind of you're kind of you're, where you grew up, okay? Because we're in Iowa, yeah. you're not from Iowa, yeah. So kind of like maybe kind of that you know. I mean, you're only 20 years, 19 and a half, right? And almost night, almost 20 tomorrow. Yeah. But, Get us up to now, right? Okay. Why are you here? How did that happen? What in the world? Because most 19, <laughs> going to turn 20 tomorrow, is not in a different state, hanging out with dudes that are in, you know, in the grind mode of doing what Ethan's doing. Yeah. Most people are in college pursuing that, most of them are not doing anything. And so here you are. I mean, it's unheard of. Yeah. Um, so that's... That's a great point. Um, if rewinding back to like when my entrepreneurship journey started, uh, I'd say around like 16 years old, I'm just in my house. I have a brother. He's like 26. So he was probably around like 22. He, he had this book, Think and Grow Rich. And <laughs> Ethan, you've heard that? Yeah, I've, I've read okay. it. Yeah. Okay, good yeah I'm 16 years old. So I'm like, why don't I just try and read this? I read it. I just fall in love with books. That just sets me on this journey of reading Rich Dad, Poor Dad at 16 years old. That that changed my life. So now I have just this whole new paradigm shift of ways to make money, ways to get myself into the outside world. And one of the big things in my life is networking. So from that time on, I'm on TikTok. I message Ethan. I'm like, 
late 17. I'm like 17. It's like I'm about to turn 18. And I message Ethan and he's like, yeah, I tried to teach people before. So I saw his TikTok. I messaged him. He's like, I tried to teach people before. Doesn't really work. I've tried to teach my friends. And I was like, yeah, yeah, whatever. So I kept messaging him and he just like blowing me off. Finally, one night he's like, let's get on a call. We hop on this call. This guy just drops sauce for hours. Like he just, he, he's just telling us everything about his entire business and everything. Us meaning you and your brother? He, me and my you, buddy. My buddy just hopped on the call. I don't okay. know how that went. Um, I was just like, yeah, this real estate investor wants to call me. You want to hop on this call with yep. me? And we talk, boom, the call ends, nothing comes out of it. Like, Two months later, I messaged him again. I'm like, yo, can I come out and learn from you? He's he's blowing up on TikTok at this point. He's at like 200K. He's got like four videos with millions of views. And I'm like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. So I I, I hit him up again. And he's like, meet me in this conference in LA. And it's like 3000 Yeah, Vegas, Vegas, Vegas. Vegas. It's like three thousand dollars. I'm like, how am I going <laughs> to come up with this money? Why? I, I don't I'm not even in real estate. Why would I spend this money? I'm like, so I'm in this conflicting I'm in this conflicting headspace and then I'm like, all right, let's just go. So I send it to Vegas and meet up with Ethan. So, so are you in high school at this time? I had just, just got out of high school. Just I, got out I'm 18 at this okay, point. So, so you're, you're just got Cause you turned 18 at yeah. the real estate conference and let's pause. He contacted the real estate people and he was like, Hey, I don't have a lot of money. I'm actually going to be there on my 18th birthday. Can you give me a discount? And they did. So he got into the event cheaper than I did. That's yeah. Fantastic. Yeah. yeah so you don't know if you don't ask. Right? Exactly. I networked my way into that one too. Like this. But yeah, so uh, we hit it off in Vegas. Um, then another week, week goes by. I'm in Iowa. I'm in the cornfields. I'm like, why am I in Iowa? <laughs> <laughs> this place is like, um, just so born and raised where? What state? Michigan. 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 Yeah. Okay. So then I came out for a week, just learned how to analyze deals, analyze the calculator, analyze properties, see what a profitable. And then I went home. And then from there, we kind of just stayed in contact. Yeah. We we, at in, that point, we were pretty yeah, close. Yeah. That was yeah. like, we're locked in now and then months go by um and i'm just like all right ethan's in asia what the heck is going on <laughs> so i had just gotten back from paris like two months before i went to asia so i was like on this traveling spree and the asia was just like wow ethan's there he looks safe i'm searching up online it's like don't go to thailand it's not <laughs> safe so i'm like oh my god and he's in thailand yeah, he's in Thailand. So I'm like, it's safe. I'm going. I text Ethan. He's like, yeah, maybe you can come, bro. And then I'm like, all right, bet. So now I'm like set. I'm going to Asia. I'm calling Ethan. He's not answering. I'm calling Ethan. He's not answering. So I'm like, wow. <laughs> and then I text him again. He's like, all right, bro. Dude, sorry, I mean, I've been busy. Oh you can come. God. When are you going to book your flight? I'm like, I'm booking it today. Call him like two more times doesn't answer. So I'm like, all right, I'm booking it and sending him a picture. I book it. I send him a picture. <laughs> and then like a month out, I get to Asia and we just link up and it was, I get there and this, he's like, I'm sending a guy to pick you up from the airport. So I got like four guys barely speaking English, like, come with me, come with me, come with me. And I'm like, who are you? And I'm like, I'm looking for a guy looking for David. Because <laughs> I sent him my, my sent driver. Him, yeah. He sent me a driver. So I'm looking for this guy. He's not there. And then, yeah. And then I get picked up oh and a guy God. just drives me two hours to Ethan. So he could have kidnapped me, I Dude. guess. But, <laughs> but we made it. We made it. So And, and to, to add on to that story, he gets there, right? Um, I ended up having a friend there that she, she was traveling around. So she came and stayed with me for a little bit. But he gets there. He starts unpacking his bag. He's got one backpack. That was the rule. We're backpacking, no suitcase with wheels because we were going to do like a motorcycle trip. You want to get in and out. We want to get in and out. So I have my 50 liter and then I have a chest strap. He comes with a school backpack. <laughs> okay. <laughs> school backpack. He starts oh, taking out his stuff and like his clothing or whatever. And then he reaches in and he pulls out three fat books. And I'm like, dude, that's like... 30 to 40 percent of the of your, capacity of your backpack what are you doing it is just like mind-blowing i was like at that moment i was like dude this kid is 
so, so hungry. different and yeah. so hungry. Like he's bringing three <laughs> books. I had brought one book that was a thinner book, you know, too. And so it was just at that time I knew I was like, I wish at my age or when I first started, you know, mm-hmm. I didn't find you till a couple of years into the game. So it was like, I wish somebody had kind of taken the time. And the last thing I want to do is take time on somebody who's not putting in the work. And that's just not the case with him. And so he's, you know, one of my best friends right now. He's intern, but like I, I really sure. look up to in a certain sense, his work ethic at the age that he is. And it just speaks volumes. So, yeah, I appreciate that. It, yeah. It it was it didn't happen overnight. Like I didn't get into books. I didn't like this. This has been a constant battle with self and constant battle with consciousness of just staying on track and not being around the wrong wrong people at this age. It's so easy to get tied up with the wrong group and mm-hmm. want to be seen in this light that isn't really you and not true to your nature. Yeah, and that's that's my big thing. Surround yourself with people doing what you want to do mm-hmm. and in the places you want to be. Because if you're surrounding yourself with someone who's just not successful or just wants you to go to college or just doesn't just shuts you down, shuts you out or just shorts you of your potential, you will just keep losing and losing. And even being being around like I even believe in like being around luck, you get more lucky. And we've just been around millionaires all day, like every other day we're around a different millionaire and we got guys trying to throw deals at Ethan. Like he, this guy is trying to throw deals at him. <laughs> tell that story real yeah. quick. Dude, yeah, this, this is a good this, one. This yeah, I think I already told it to yeah, you a little bit. They, so tell about the the agents that met me on TikTok or whatever. Yeah, you, you lead it. Just yeah. constantly, we're meeting with just different successful people and people not even um, in the same game, but still looking for the same level of success. So. We just met with these realtors the other day. They're looking to get more properties. They're asking Ethan how to obtain more properties. And he's he's blowing their minds. These guys own a whole business. And they're looking at this guy who just buys properties, doesn't have his real estate license. And he they're like, how do we get deals? And he's like, well, first you start seller financing. That's they're, they're going all through the bank. They're going through conventional loans. 20% down yes. all the time. And it's just like, dude, that's, that's where... And th- what did they say? You need money to buy yeah, real estate. Yeah. And I was like, bro, you got to throw that notion out the out window the right yeah. now. Because then you limit yourself to the amount of money that's in your bank account for the deals that you're analyzing. So these agents out of Ames out of Ames are asking you guys questions in regard to how to gain more business for them to be the list how to, agents. Uh, they, how to scale. That was the question. How do so we they're scale? they're investors themselves. They're yeah. investors. And so I think they got five doors. One was 23 and one was 25. Shout out to Jason Jake. Um 23, 25, both have five doors and they want to know how to scale. Got it. Yeah. Okay. And so yep. they asked me, yeah. how do we find more deals? How yep. do we find more leads? How do we scale? And so the, we talk about seller financing and, but ultimately it was like, guys, it's, it's relationships. I was like, yeah. I threw out the, the notion of like buying on Zillow and only having to go through agents. And, you know, I love going through D- D- uh, Dustin, but it, that just wasn't it. And I was like, I came up with this idea to find properties and I could skip trace them and find out who the owners were. And then when I'd contact the owner, it was never about buying the property. It was about the relationship. Let me hear your story. And sometimes trying to just buy someone dinner doesn't always work, you know, but if you are looking up to somebody and what I've realized with a lot of more successful people, they want a chance to tell their story, especially to younger, hungry people. So I phrased it around that. Let me come. I'll work for you for free. I'll paint for you for free. Like I get that a whiskey or a dinner may not be the value that you're looking for to take this time, but I want to hear your story. And at that point, I realized that's what those guys care about. They don't have a lot of people that are interested in their story or how they built things. So I'm telling them this. (laughs) And they're kind of like, nah, this guy's crazy. <laughs> the very next day, the very next day, Marty contacts yep. me, which is the owner of the first apartment building I ever bought. And I had just got, we had just closed the contract that I had for a long time. And I, he ended up making like $100,000. 
And I, <laughs> I thought he was calling me to, to lend me that money to get more money, to get yeah. more money so that he, he just made all this money. He's going to lend it to me. Yep. He wants something to do with it. That is not the intent of, of it at all. I'll let you take over the rest because he's with me the whole time. This guy just whips out a paper of like <laughs> six properties that he owns that he just wants to liquidate. He's like, all right, Ethan, you can just choose from these. I'll, I'll sell or finance them all to you. Um, and you can you can take them as they come, so you don't gotta buy them all now. You can take Ooh. your time on buying them. So he's basically just putting all these deals in Ethan's face and saying, "Well, you can buy these whenever you feel is a good time." And <laughs> that's that. <laughs> yeah. That. So I, that's it's that's what I'm saying though. Yeah. Like just being around that look. Like my first client just contacted me too. So like I just feel like we're we're our luck is like playing off each other and. Um, it, it's, it's coming in tenfolds. Yeah. That's, that's how I see it. Well, you know that, I mean, I know what you're saying when you say luck, you yeah. know, we kind of have, had, it's haven't, not just luck. Yeah. I've had this conversation, but you know, it's, I think the harder you, the harder you work, you know, the luckier you get. Definitely. You know definitely. I mean? But just being in the game and just being, I mean, with Marty, I mean, shoot, I remember that, what, four years? I mean, that's been a... That's three, been a relationship, yeah. Four-year relationship. Yeah. You know, and I mean, I remember meeting Marty the very first time. Smoking a smoking cigar. A cigar. In the property. <laughs> he was trying to sell it. So I, so I go and we meet up with him and he's standing outside the, the you know, this brick, beautiful building. And yeah. He's sitting there with his <laughs> a, a hat. Country hat, yeah. cowboy hat. Cowboy looking leather hat, you know, like a yeah. little flower. <laughs> you know, I mean, just kind of and a big old stogie. <laughs> I mean, that thing was so fat. And, I mean, and I just remember That's he's just, just smoking it. So we're sitting there going, okay, we're going to go on this property. You would think he would set the cigar. C- cigar it, wasn't even a, it was a large cigar. Yeah. He would put it out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! I own this is it. You know, this is in 1990s. This is yeah. you know 2022 or 2021 when he just kept it cherry on top. I mean, the whole thing is smoking, <laughs> just knock, lighting knock, up knock. the apartment. And we're literally in these apartments, looking through this place, and he's just smoking. His <laughs> That's my first, my first, uh, I guess, experience with Marty. So, yeah. um, but what a great guy! But just shows, like you said, I mean, this dude is just. Yeah, just laying it out for Ethan and his team to just be like, here you go, you know, whatever you want to do and the timeline. And I mean, that's, you know, because there's guys like that who, you know, they, their timeline's not as important as they just want it. They just want the deal to be done yeah. at some point. And they, and, and Ethan has, uh, I mean, obviously he's very experienced with closing deals. Yeah. And these guys just want, they want to know that the guy who they're working with is genuine, authentic. Yeah. They're they're true to the word. They're you know if they say they're going to pay them, they're going to pay them. Yeah. Even if they run into you know obstacles, you're going to get it done. Yeah. And people in in today's age, that's harder than it sounds to find that. And I think especially these guys that have been around the block, have money. Yeah. They just they've know, seen bad business. They see that, and yeah. they and that's what they grew up on. They grew up on, hey, I'll shake your hand, and we don't need 55 pages to sign. Sign, you know, shake my hand, you're going to pay me? Okay, cool, let's roll. Yeah. Now, you can't do that. No, you know, there's all no. this legal garbage because people, it's a, we're in a legality s- system that just, if you don't like someone, you sue them. And yeah. so, you know, here, this is, it's just awesome to, to have this feeling, these these old school guys, and, and, and Ethan's, has a way of just, you know, falling in these guys just like <laughs> yeah. Ethan. And, but yeah, they can do it with anybody. But it's just putting the time in. Um, to make that relationship. To yeah. make it work, you know. Yeah. I mean, it takes work. Every relationship takes yeah. work, you know. And you don't know when you're having a good day. And, exactly. And Ethan had a good day yesterday. So <laughs> with like, yeah, here's six or seven properties. It's just crazy that like we were at that dinner. Yeah. And they, I could tell that they were like, nah, this is crazy. You know, like. This, it's no, not but, the relationship, you know, or whatever. But then the very next day. Did you talk, call those guys? No, I didn't. Yeah. I, I kind of want might, to. Just, it, maybe. Yeah, one of them follows me on Instagram. But yeah, it was. And it just then it even reiterated what I was saying. I was yeah. like, I know I'm on the right track. Like, I know it's the relationships because then I no longer have to deal source as crazy. Whenever this gets finished out with Marty, one of those other five, six other investors that I put years into a relationship they'll call me and they'll have a property that's not performing the way they want. And I want to be that person that, that does it. I think, 
I think there's, I think when you get into investing in real estate and you know it's a long game, you know, it's mm-hmm. a long play, you know, in terms of, I mean, it can be short. In, yeah. Like, but the guys that are, you know, are very wealthy, I mean, they're in it for the long haul, mm-hmm. you know. Yeah. And I think once you start having that mindset of like, you know, you got your day job, you got whatever you're doing to, to pay the bills and whatever. But once you understand that this is a 15, 20, 25, 30 year process, you kind of relax a little bit. You're not trying to sell. Yeah. You know what I mean? You're trying to just, your motives, I guess, have changed a little bit where you, you know you know when you know you know it's going to come back to you. It takes a pressure. But a lot of these guys, a lot of these these guys are looking for a deal tomorrow. Like yeah. I need one today. I, I got this money. I got this 40K. I want to spend it because I listen to this podcast <laughs> and I got I to, gotta, you know, I got to go, 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 go. It's not it. Those are the guys that, you know, will maybe pick up a property, but you know, honestly, might the, not be the right one. It's not, might not be the right one. And, and this long term, I got a couple, I got a couple of guys, investor. He just buys duplexes. I met and, him, right? Yep. We went out for we golfing. Went, golf, went golfing okay. together and 16. He's got like 16. Nah, he's up to 23 now. All it is is duplexes. 23, that is like 24. his lane of what he is building. Became we've, good at. We've shown him multi-units. We've shown him single family. We've shown him. I mean, he's looked at him. He's like, yeah, let's go check this out. And he always... He always comes back to, you know what? No, I think this is this is my play and this is what I do. And he's killing mastered it, it yeah. killing it. And most of his because I'm a, I'm a, I'm his agent. Yeah. Do you think I want him to just go and use me with heck yeah? And we and we've <laughs> we've I've sold him a few, but he understands like he's a long term player. Like he's yeah. like, and so he'll have relationships for three, four, five years, and then and typically most of them are retired. And a lot of them he meets, you know, at his country club and because he's you know he has money and stuff so yeah. he's kind of networking with some guys that had a lot of money and they trust him and then they love the seller financing because they want the money to come in they want that cash flow and then they don't want to sell off their portfolio and get hit with taxes so yeah they're just slowly doing this and he it's brilliant dude we've done a couple of seller financing deals and you sit back kind of Give us your thoughts on why seller financing, you know, is important. Like try and almost sell uh, the viewers right now and why uh, someone would not go to a bank uh, and want to sell or finance a property. Yeah. So uh, just learning this stuff for the past year, I've, I think I've caught on pretty, I got a pretty good grasp on it. And especially just seeing how Ethan's structuring his words in his office when he's on these phone calls with guys and big investors. Um, seller financing is just... I think the first thing that sticks out to me is you don't need the bank. And I think that sticks out to everyone because Mm -hmm. not having to use the bank, not having those set terms is so important because it it, it leaves the deal like Play-Doh. You can kind of mold it to fit. You you guys can mold it to fit. Yeah, you guys are molding the deal to fit to both your needs. And when you have that in your hands to mold that deal, both parties can come out extra happy. And... The, the seller doesn't have to pay capital gains tax because you have a set interest rate. So they're not just taking this chunk of money. And, and the reason investors don't like paying capital gains tax is because they lose their money. They lose profit. So they're willing to take, like when you're making millions and millions of dollars, you're not worried um, about taking little monthly Couple payments hundred thousand, yeah you know, whatever yeah like, because you're already you get you're sustained you're you're secure yeah i don't like that word but you're secure and so just not going to have the bank so now you don't have to you only have to put five percent of your bank account down yeah. instead of 20 percent, which the bank will make you put 20 percent. that's no if ands or buts and well and that's even negotiable. Yeah, you could so, get less than five. You might have to get more than five. Yeah, it just yeah. depends on yeah. the seller. You could get one percent. So that's molding the deal to your play, and that's so important. Structuring your deals. So with that being said, you can attain so much more real estate. Like we were talking with those guys, they they put like eighty k into f- I think a hundred yeah hundred k yeah. to buy them five hundred thousand dollars of real estate. Yeah, and then I gave them the example yeah. of the. Me and my partner Ashley in Kansas City, we put sixty-five k down to buy eight hundred and fifty thousand dollars worth of real estate. So at those numbers, they could have theoretically, instead of only been purchasing five hundred thousand dollars, they could have got like one point three, one point four with the same down payment. Right. But they just had that, and there's no shots at anybody. Like you only, you don't know yeah. what you don't know, you know. But you have this limiting belief, which is why I'm trying to 
push my beliefs on him so he's not stuck in this idea of like, oh, I have to have 20% down to buy a $250,000 building. Therefore, I need 50K. You can't, you know how hard it is to get 50K at 19 years? You know, that, that's not in anymore. Yeah, he's, and, and as we're going to, you, me, and whoever teams up on these deals, he's going to get to watch how we mold and shape those those offers with Marty. Right. Yeah. Proud of you, man. It's, so it, cool. it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy how so many people have that belief. Even realtors, these guys are in the game. <laughs> these guys are in the game every For day. Residential though. So yeah. you do gotta throw that out there. There's a little bit different of residential agents versus agents who primarily focus on, you know, investors or but commercial. I think it just comes back to the terminology. Like what when you're getting licensed, do you think that should be taught? You're an agent. Yeah. At what point did that switch for you happen? There's because they don't teach you that. And no, yeah, and it's not a prerequisite, right? Yeah. There's agents that are part time. There's agents full time. There's agents that rent. They don't even own their own homes. Own home. they, there's agents that own their own homes. You know, and so there's agents that buy investments. Yeah, you know? and and there's guys that are making a million dollars a year selling real estate in Des Moines that don't own one piece of rental property. Yeah. That to me is crazy. Crazy. You know, but, but that's just my perspective. You know, they're, that's not, that's not the lane they want to play. They want to play in the stock market. They, you know, I'm assuming they're doing great point, yeah. other stuff. However, they just feel like they don't want to deal with what we as investors deal with. Yeah. Which, you know, it's not for everybody. Right. But I do believe that the ones that do play in that role, if you will, I, I, I mean, I think they have an advantage. I think they mm -hmm. have an advantage of really understanding the Every, full the picture, full picture of what real estate can truly do for people uh, from, you know, from just an investment in terms of if you're, you know, just purchased and living it for 30 years, you know, I mean, most people, by the time they retire, the only thing they have left is their home. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, most people don't have, a re, you know, a savings account, right? So, but they have the house that's paid off. Yeah. Um, and so, I mean, I, I think, and I, I was just talking to another invest, uh, real estate um, agent, Three days ago, I was telling you about Jason. Mm -hmm. um, he has like 45, 40 some single family houses. He has one duplex. But, you know, he just, he got into the game not too long ago. He was selling cars yeah. for 12, 15 years, 12 hour days. He's like, he's like, we as, he goes, dude, people think real estate agents, man, you guys, you know, we work all the time. He's like, no, you don't. <laughs> he's like, you don't work that hard. <laughs> Go sell cars for 12 hours a day. That's hard work. Yeah. And my brother, you know, Jason did yeah, that, you yeah, know, yeah. did the card thing. But so now he's, he knew that like selling houses, being a real estate agent is, is the, is the job that pays the bills. Investing in real estate is how you get wealthy. Yeah. Right. And there's a big difference. A huge. Passive income, active income. Yeah. Passive income, active. And so you just, you pick and choose, but man, I tell you what, like there's a lot of agents. I would, I mean, I would, I would be wondering to see what percentages of real estate agents actually invest in real estate. I bet it's, it's I don't know mind what it blowing. is. Small. Wait, wait, so what was that small switch for you? Like you said, you didn't learn it. Was there a person you met or an investor or a situation that happened? What was that switch that was like, man, 75, 80% of what I've been taught up to this point isn't how the game has to be played. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, before I even got, I mean, I was, you know, we were a little bit different because we got, when we first started, I mean, I bought my first flip property in 2016. Oh, that's right. Yeah, you came in, you as, got your license as because. As more of an investor. And more of an investor. Yeah, right, so I different. came in more, I, I, I saw the passive income. I saw wealth creation. I saw time and money. You know, these are the things that I saw before I became an agent. Then once I started flipping, then I realized, you know, here I you know, you spend, you know, you got 20,000, you know, on a profit or 30 or whatever it is. And then you're given, you know, you're having this listing agent that you might pay eight to $10,000 to list your property and go, Oh yeah. my gosh. Yeah. You know, and, and so you I'm like, just keep that. Yeah. I'm like, so you, so you have all these, you know, ways to make money. Well, that for us was another way for us to, to keep, you know, and, and I was better at that than, you know, putting nails in a, in a wall and yeah. doing demo and all stuff. I mean, I, I was more, my knowledge base was better on selling and stuff. But what was the switch for you, man? For just kind of realizing things can be done differently than what you were either taught in school or maybe even what you read in some of the books. 
I mean, no, some of them opened up those doors, but what was like the, this is not as it seems to a majority of the population. I think, I think I've had a couple of switches. Um, the one that sticks out to me the most is right now, probably Asia, like the, the amount of like successful young kids i met in asia in bali too in ba oh my, oh my gosh. in bali i met this kid he will be on forbes 30 under 30 this year he's 20 years old he's so successful he's a coder and he basically just builds these crazy programs and he learned it when he was 16 dropped out of college he has two Porsches. Like he is just, <laughs> just and, and, wild. Yeah, all his twenty years old. His bets, his bets yeah. are on him selling his business. He bets on building businesses and selling them. That's how, that's his success. And it, you can't just become a coder under night overnight. Coding is so difficult. So it's a, it's in store. It's a high value skill. And just these other two Danish kids I met, killing it. They run a whole agency out of Bali. They're twenty and twenty two. Like there's just so much success there and you see the success and you see that it's so obtainable and you see that your daily routine can look just like theirs and you see their micro habits are similar to yours. So that opens this paradigm shift of, okay, they're doing it. What, why can't I do it? What, he's not an alien. Like he has no, like he has access to the same information, same, we all have access to this unlimited source of money and they're just everything. We're all on the same boat. That's awesome. All right, let's dial a little bit into your story. Yep. You're a social media manager now. How yep. did you get to that point? Um, so I just, I, I've always want to make income from wherever. I don't want to be held down to a place. And that's what I've always been scared of. And so when I got to Bali, the goal was to figure out a way to make the income. And I've, I've managed social medias. I've helped people build their brands. Um, for free. I was just doing it because I wanted to see what I could do with something else. And when you got, not to interrupt, yeah. when you got to Bali, you had 18, 19,000 followers on TikTok, like 2,500 followers on Instagram. Yeah. And now you have a completely brand new account. You still have the 20,000 on TikTok. You started a new account that's at 40 ish thousand, yeah, right? 40, this 000. is all his face. This isn't like a some other company. And now your Instagram's about to break. 7,000. Uh, yeah, my Instagram's at 712 as of today. So good yeah. shit. So, yeah, so basically, my last day in Thailand, I posted a TikTok on a Thai phone and it just blew a up. Thai phone. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I don't know why. I, I was just like, why don't I try this? And I tried it, 600,000 views. So, um, <laughs> I've just been focused on scaling that. That's like a side hustle, though. So, my main income, because I will be moving back to Asia in March. In March 1st, you yes, fly back. I will move to Thailand and I, I will just stay there until my visa expires and then I'll probably go to Philippines. And the goal with this is to just take as much risk as possible. Like end up in these situations where I have no idea what the outcome is going to be because the outcome can be better than I can even imagine. So if I put myself in these bigger risks now when I'm younger and I have more time, because if I fail, if everything goes wrong, I run out of money, I come back to the U.S., I pick up a sales job, I make that back in less than a year. Try it again. Yeah, less than a year. And then I can just do the same thing or I know that this fails. I, I like the term fail fast. The faster you fail, the quicker you can start something new. That doesn't mean just throw it away, but that means fail fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if we're failing fast, then we can start quicker. And that's kind of how I'm looking at it. So, um, God, you know, that's dude, just amazing though. His word structure with all that, <laughs> phenomenal. I think, I, absolutely. It's well spoken. And I think, man, in today's world, you know, I, I, I have three kids and I'm, and I'm trying to teach them and they're perfectionists. Like, yeah. like they're so, <laughs> like they don't want to do anything wrong. Yeah. Right. It's, they're in a position where. They, they, they're constantly like wanting to make sure that mom and dad are, you know, happy, happy, proud of them, whatever, which we are, but they just, they're rule followers to the T yeah. and, uh, the middle child is a little bit different, but he's not, he's not a rule follower, but, but my oldest is, and yeah. there, and there's times where I'll, I'll literally run a red light just because he'll freak, he'll freak out. He's like, dude, you just ran a, you know, red light. I'm like, it's gonna be okay. And if I get pulled over, 
I'll get a ticket and it's going to be fine. Yeah. I'm not going to hurt anybody. Cause I look both ways. Mm-hmm. Nobody's there. No one's going to die. It's We're fine. Okay. We're okay. Right. Mm-hmm. And he just, or he has to have straight A's, you yeah. know? And, and it's like, B's are fine. You know, I'm like, dude, you're good. Like quit. And I do that with him because he just puts so much pressure on himself. And I think yeah. in this world, like as parents, as coaches, cause I do coaching too, like there's so much pressure, so much pressure on these kids. Okay. Especially when they get into, you know, sporting events, all stuff like they're the culture that we raise our kids. There's so much pressure on them that they just need to be kids. Yeah. Right. And they need to learn how to fail. Yeah. They need to learn that it's okay to fail as long as you get your butt up and you go and you take action, you continue to fail fast. Yeah. Like you say, oh, fail forward, right? Yeah, fail forward. It's like, dude, just keep, I don't care. Just get up, try it again. Get up, try it again. Get up and try the fact that you you are doing what I'm trying to instill in my kids is awesome. Because by the time you're 30, 10 more years of just screwing up. Think about that. Just think of where he's going to be. It's amazing. Where I I was so careful of trying to be, you know, I call it the spider monk, like not messing up to get fired or whatever. But you're like, okay, if I get fired, cool. Yeah. Not not that we want to get people fired. Yeah, yeah, But I think that's even more of the environment in the education system. I mean, they teach you this is the test you have to take. And you can't use any of the resources that the world has created to make this situation better. And then you're you're in these environments where you're not encouraged. Like if you fail, you fail, right? But in the real world, you fail and you're like, well, I can just try something different. And if I'm creative enough, then the, the outcome that I still want is still well, obtainable. Yeah. But that's not what happens in school. And I I don't know who I was talking to the other day that said that Teach the subject about money apparently is illegal to teach in school. It is one of the things that the government says that they get to pick what the the, the schools are learning and, yeah. and why private schools are so important. It was Shannon. It was yeah. Shannon, right? Yeah, and he was talking like, "How much money do I got to get to put my kid in a private school? Why? It, why is the government not allowing?" the subject of money to be taught in schools. Well, I mean, maybe here's a conspiracy theory or whatever. It's because they want the majority of the population to be in the highest tax bracket possible. And if you start teaching people at a very young age to use the resources that they have accessible to, that's not going to be the final outcome. It's not going to be the nine to five rat race. It's not going to be, well, I'm making $100,000 a year. I don't like my day job, but hey, I can buy a you know $50,000 car. I have a $300,000 house. Life is good. No life is not good if nine to five, one third of your life, you're not enjoying what you're doing. Mm-hmm. That's not what success is supposed to look like. Yeah. And it's for 2023, the new freedom is freedom. Like, I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but like freedom isn't that you make 100K and you get two days off a week. Freedom's that you can work in these places that you want to travel and vacation, but you can make them a home. You can make them, you can take, you can take this place for granted for longer. You don't have to go for a week and then you're right back to where you don't want to be. Mm-hmm. And then it's just like, well, this is hell. So then you're right back, and, <laughs> then, <it's> yeah. hell. <laughs> and then it's like, all right, so I'll save my money here, and then I'll get another vacation. Oh, now I'm on a vacation days, and it's just it's just that repeating cycle that I'm that vicious. It's a vicious cycle. It's a vicious cycle. We took more vacation days in our trip to Asia. If you get 21 PTO days, which is a higher amount of PTO, normally it's like 14 or something like mm-hmm. that. We were gone. I was gone for 68 days. Yeah, that's th- over three years of PTO that I took in one vacation. That was just one vacation for the year. And then he went to Mexico the week after. (laughs) So like, (laughs) but you know, I think there's a, there's definitely a shift because, because of technology, because of, I mean, look at these cameras we got. Yeah, we got, I mean, you're live. Three cameras set up live live on Instagram and TikTok. Live on Instagram. People all over the literally world is potentially on there watching. Yes. I mean, I don't, foresee that happening when i was 20 and that's the thing 20 years ago no we nobody's doing this 20 years ago that's the thing though our parents our parents don't know like what new money new money there's so much new money there's 
you can build fan bases and sell a product to a thousand people for a hundred dollars and you make a hundred K a year. Yeah. There, there's you, just, you the technology has just yeah. totally opened the doors to so many crazy opportunities and the way, different way of thinking. But I, I think right now, I mean, it's clearly there's a shift, especially with COVID and everything like people, companies are having, I mean, how many, how many f- companies that used to have, you have to go in the office Okay, mm-hmm. nine to five or eight to five, you have to be in here 40 hours a week. Sitting, looking at a but screen. You have to, or else you have no job. COVID hits, changes the game. Now, people literally last, you know, year and a half, whatever, two years has said kind of like, no. And now the corporate world is having to adjust, to, adjust to this type of mindset that the majority of these pre-corporate people that, you know, before COVID, now it's like, now they're, okay, we'll give you one day, two days. You can work from home. Five, yeah. You know, everyone's, they're becoming more and more and more flexible. flexible. And, you know, and I, I think that all that's great. My, my concern though is like, I do think there's a lack of like work ethic, like what it really takes to be successful. And I think because everyone's trying to push the easy button. I think there's I think there's a there's a case for that where everyone's trying to push the easy button to try to go you know to get to this place of success faster and I I still think if you could combine this technology with this unbelievable work ethic that our folks you know our parents our grandparents grew up doing okay and then combine those together game over like unbelievable success Unbelievable success. Yeah. And I think, you know, you got like our age where we're we're kind of like stuck in the middle. Middle, right? yeah. We're kind of we, we knew what our grandparents did. We knew how hard they worked. Okay. For a lifestyle that wasn't I mean it was decent, but nothing yeah. comparable to a twenty year old in Bali that's making, you know, money millions. Yeah. But I, I would assume that there was probably people yeah. doing that then. But yeah. technology allows us to tap into those people yes. to know that they existed. They exist more Back in 20 them. years ago, they probably existed. We just didn't know about it. Yeah. And that's the two right? years, like past two years, I've been literally reteaching myself to dream big because school literally shoots. You're taught when you're young to chase your dreams. Then you go to school and then they give you, <laughs> they give you your dream. They literally like put your dream on a silver platter for you and say, pick out, pick out one of these dreams. And then that's your dream. Here you are. And you just work like, eh, and then you get your dream. And, <laughs> but it's not even actually yours. Yeah, it's, it's not like even, one they crafted for yeah, you. It's usually and they're removing your freedom to build that dream from the ground up. Yeah. Cause now you're spending 40 hours a week. You go home to your girlfriend. She wants to spend time with you. Now you got to spend time with her. Yeah, girlfriend. Never. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Dude, it's fun. I'm just kidding. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. Um, you better. Remember. I've had a girlfriend. I, I think pr- we'll edit that. Right? <laughs> I probably won't. Uh, I probably won't get a girlfriend for quite a while. I'm. I'm really locked in right now. Like I said, incubating. So I just know they like. You have one job that's 40 hours a week. She's a whole nother 40 hours a week most of the time, plus a bank account of. A heartbroken bank account. <laughs> <laughs> and then sleep. Yeah. There's right. your whole, there's not a whole lot of time to maneuver and build something outside of that, yeah. if that if that's what's consuming a lot of your time. I just don't think love, everyone wants like, everyone wants to get their life so set up and structured and then spend the f- next 50 years of their life just living the structure over and over again, year after year. But I kind of just want this life of like, all right, maybe this year I'm a news reporter in Singapore. <laughs> like some wild things like like this year i'm hosting a cooking show like just doing random stuff with my life maybe i want to learn surfing this year maybe i want to like become a muay thai fighter like i just want all these yeah. things i want opportunity and to figure out options. what it is you want to do in the future and until you test all those different avenues how are you actually supposed to know what you like rachel that built us the analyzer you met her yes. in thailand she called me last night and she's having a really rough time she was like i feel like you know, I, I don't know what I want to do. She is one of the most brilliant minds I have ever encountered. What she can do with Excel is like nothing I've ever seen before. And now she's in this situation where she she feels because of what she's learned in society that she's wrong for not knowing what she wants to do now. 
She's in Australia, mm. traveling, living a life that a majority of the population of. will never even right. understand. And she's feeling pressure from family or friends that are in Iowa. <laughs> You're in Australia being a boss. And, you know, she, she might end up having to miss out on this vacation. She's like, I don't know if I should take a loan out. I don't know if I should, you know, drain my savings. And I'm like, what you're learning right now is far more valuable. Like drain your, drain your savings right now. What, whatever few gold coins as richest man in Babylon would say, whatever few gold coins you got right now, isn't ultimately going to affect your retirement. If you're taking that gold and you're figuring out, okay, I don't like to do that. That's valuable. Get rid of the gold. If you and then you do a couple different things, you're like, you know what? And I told her, I was like, if you end up wanting to, if you love travel, then figure out how to go be a flight attendant. Like you don't, you've already hit a certain level of like, my parents are proud of me because I became an, uh, because I was an actuary. That's a hard title to get alone. Like become a flight attendant, travel, you get cheaper travel. You don't have to have this job title that, that holds so much weight. There's so much more value in just doing something that you love. And then you have the freedom to go. Like you don't need this constraint of what society told you. I got to do this by this age. I got to own a house. I got to have a kid. It's like, that's not, that's not how it's supposed to be anymore. Right. That that ship is long sailed. And I feel like we value a job title in this society more than we value someone's name. Or an That's income. You value yeah. a six figure income yeah. versus like I enjoy my job. I was I think we've talked about this. I would rather date or marry somebody, a, a teacher, little income who loves teaching and comes home happy, happy than even making a quarter of a million dollars a year and they come home and they're constantly down about how their boss Stress. treats them or their co-workers. Like, no, no, that, that's not the and energy for yourself, I want in my life. Even for yourself, you'd probably rather no. make 50K yeah. than 100K if you have all those hours free time. Like you, yep. you deal with that. Now. Like this is a stressful game to be in, but... I love it. And how do you, I mean, you're making great money now yeah. and I know you get stressed. Like how does that resonate to somebody who's a decade older than me? I'm a decade older than him. You're two decades. Like how does that resonate when you hear us kind of going on this rant about that aspect of things? You know, I think, I think there's in this life we live it's too damn short. And I think everyone needs to get up and wake up to the fact that we're on this ball of mud for just a split second yeah. comparable to eternity. You know what I mean? Comparable to whatever belief system you are, when you look at something and you have eternity, right? Mm -hmm. Can yeah. you see it? No. Nope. Because it's it's so small, yeah. And I think it's it's we get so worked up about all these things that people think and just chasing you know this and chasing impressing that, them, trying to impress your neighbor, trying to impress your whoever. And I think it goes back to all these things that we've been talking about. And I think, man, if you just are okay to fail and just enjoy finding something that you're passionate about, which is hard and looks, so it's hard as it sounds, yeah, very hard, and just really find whatever you're passionate about, and then make that your thing. And I, I think for us, I love real estate. And so it works out great because it pays well. <laughs> you know, I, yeah. I think it works out fine because we're, we do okay. So yeah. uh, where other people, you mentioned teachers. God bless teachers, mm -hmm. right? Thank God we have them because yeah. they are, they do amazing j job. I mean, we have like, we have three kids. We have some of the most amazing teachers that teach our kids a lot they're with our kids seven eight hours a day yeah like you want good educators yeah for sure and you want educators that are passionate that love it that are okay with getting paid 40 50 60 70 grand i'm glad they get the ipers i'm glad that the you know that they're state funded with they get they get taken because that is really yeah. important but they're they do it not for the money they do it because they love it yeah and i think everyone should do that Everyone should do that. Yeah. And I, quit it. Quit the crap because tomorrow you could wake up and you could find out some negative crap that has happened in your life or has happened in your life and instantly things can change. Exactly. I got stories right now that are happening with my family and it's like one day it all can change and it's, yeah. 
I love what you're doing, man. No, I think yeah. it's the coolest thing to be 20 years old tomorrow and <laughs> doing and doing what you do because I, I applaud it. I think it's I think it takes guts. I think I think what you're doing is probably not real popular. I guarantee there's but it sounds like your mom is like super so supportive. supportive. Uh, it took a little bit of time. Right? Okay, yeah. So if we want to go over that story real quick. Yeah, so, let's run it. Yeah. Yeah. So um <laughs> So I was in college for about three months. Um, this was during COVID. So I was just waking up in bed, opening my laptop and going back to sleep. Um, <laughs> so I'd wake up, I'd open my laptop, I'd go back to sleep. I'd wake up in between the class and I'd be like, oh, yeah. And then I... <laughs> what are you doing a class online then? Online. Yeah, yeah, online. So you, so you just, just open your laptop. Yeah. So <laughs> I was doing that and I was like, what am I? I'm, I literally learned nothing and I'm just getting thrown these essays that are like, find me the punctual correction of like, I'm learning nothing and I'm going for a business degree. So what the, what am I doing? What am I wasting my time on? Yeah. So I'm like, mom, I'm dropping out. She's like, oh, hell no. So I, we just get in this large war. Um, I'm like, I want to chase my dreams and I'm very confident in myself that I can, I can attain success. And she's like, uh, blah 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 you don't know that like i really want you and she's still even every time i call her she's like well you could be a server today and it's just it's i'm fighting that paradigm so i used to get mad at her and like this is when i dropped out of college i just stopped going i stopped doing my assignments i barely told her i dropped out so then I, she's like yelling at me yelling at me so i just run away not like run away but sure. i i take my car and I just go sit behind the store all day with my backpack and like five books. <laughs> so I didn't, I just brought a notebook and like five books. I didn't bring any clothes or anything. I'm like trying to find places to stay that night. And then she just calls me. She's like, all right, do what you want. Just come home. And I went home. And from there, I've just been, I, I, I just think I showed her. I don't want to say it's the best thing I did because it could have turned out wrong. She could have been like, mm -hmm. all right, never come home. But I, I think it was just the fact that I showed her how serious I was. I showed her that I'm willing to risk it all for this crazy little idea. And and it hasn't worked out yet. Like I'm not, I, some nights I'm like, what am I doing? Maybe I should go back to college. And it's like these reinforcing thoughts of just knowing that as long as I set the intention, attacking it constantly, that even if I fail, I know I still did it. I took the risk. And I don't want to be laying on that deathbed knowing you didn't do it. You just didn't go for it. You just kind of fit in and lived a life of mediocrity. It sounds like your mom though is like, she's my number one supporter. She's there, dude. Yeah, like if, if, and you know that. So yeah. if you fail once she's, again, but that's not you good. Could go though, home. I feel like, but I feel you, like that's not good too though. Cause if it's like, that gives me a plan B mm -hmm. and I don't want a plan B. That's why I dropped out of college. I'm like, no plan B. Love that. No plan B. No plan B. I do want to touch in on, um, like you, you said that your mom used to get mad or didn't believe it. And I think that there, it's really easy to be younger and just like almost expect your friends or your family or whatever to just like have this unrelentless belief in you. But that's like, the older I get, that's so unfair. Like you have to prove to them yeah. that this is what it's supposed to be. I mean, with my parents at least, I I'm fortunate enough to say that I think my parents raised me to believe that I could be anything I wanted to be except a millionaire. And that's no, that's no, you know, fault, fault to them. It was like, yeah. that was so far out of their reality I like that, that. Like, that they couldn't, they couldn't even comprehend it. So when I was like, no, I'm going to become a millionaire, they were just like, yeah, blah, 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 blah. And it's not like, and I didn't feel the support. Like I knew they loved me and blah, blah, blah. But like I had to show relentless amounts of work being up till two or three a.m. when I'd randomly text them, asking them a question, or showing them that I was like working on an analyzer, that for them to know, like, man, we're sleeping and he is grinding right now, you know. And and it wasn't until they just continue, I like, continually put the effort forward. I'm not successful because I'm super smart. I'm not successful because I'm special or because of where I come from. It's I'm going to be successful because the amount of effort I'm putting in, it's undeniable. It's like it's it's yeah. gonna happen. Yeah. And and I think that if more young people didn't get so um, 
let down or whatever by their parents or their friends not believing in them and they just put, took it back on themselves like i haven't put in the work to make them believe right. absolutely like you, you guys and everybody tyler my producer like he's putting in all these hours of work because he knows what i'm putting in on yeah. the back side and it's like I, how could i expect someone to do that unless i'm doing the same stuff up forward and they know that it's it's un it's undeniable. Yeah, it's gonna happen. And I don't that, know when it's gonna happen, but uh, it's 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 coming. Motherfucker is coming. <laughs> yeah, it's coming fast. <laughs> and that's the thing. Like I feel like everyone's trying to mold their dreams for their parents, and like that was a crazy paradigm shift for me too. Like, why would I want to mold something for someone else with my? It's like. Giving someone a canvas and then telling them what to paint and being mad when you don't paint the picture so they want they, you to. Yeah, yeah. So, I like that. So I really like that. So yeah, you like get mad that someone paints a picture that you told them to paint this and they painted this. Like that's that's not how life's supposed to work. You're supposed to paint your own picture, paint your own path, and that's where true success comes. And that's why you look at Jeff Bezos and everyone's like wow, I can never be like him. But he knew that he could paint his own path and it may have not happened overnight because Amazon's a bookstore out of a garage, right? He built Something it out like of the that, garage. Man. It's a bookstore out of the garage and he turned it into basically the biggest retail store in the world because it's everything you need in one spot. And I think that's insane. Like if you think about the paradigm shift for everyone in that time of when Amazon was really building up and gaining momentum, they were like, wow, everything I need is in one place. It's directly delivered to my door. I don't have to leave. I can use my credit card, pay off my credit card. I don't got to go get cash from the bank. I got it. Like there's just all these little core values that he stuck to fast, convenient. And that's what structured something so great. And that's why it pays dividends because he painted his own picture. Yeah. All it's right. We stuff. are we are a little bit close to our time frame. I want to give you some time to think of like about your favorite quote. But I also kind of want to give Dustin the chance to maybe offload some advice for what David is about to embark on and maybe uh, some difficulties that you've overcome to, to help you get to the point where he's at the, where you're at so that when he encounters some difficulties, you might have these words of wisdom to fall back on. So you think about that quote or whatever is important. Um, and let's let you take the floor and kind of sure. offer some words of wisdom. <clears throat> well, I think the best, I mean, first off, I, I just want to say that, you know, this has been a, a great, this has been a great, episode. great, great episode. Um, of course, I've known David here and there when you came yeah, last time you came over. Last, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I just, I really think that the best advice I give you is, is to continue to paint that vision for yourself. You know, I mean, like continue to go back to what you truly want out of life. And I think a lot of times we get caught up in the, the wrong route, if you will. The, you know, we just kind of go down this path and then you, you life because you're 20. Yeah. Life's going to be a lot different when you're 25. Yeah. When you're 30, 35, right? Things change, you know, and I think, and I think it's by choice, right? But there will be things that will start shifting for you in terms of, I know you're, you know, you're focused right now, but girls and, oh, and yeah. maybe having a wife, having kids, um, you know, th priorities do change, right? Yeah, you're course. just grinding, man. You're just 20 years old, just yeah. killing it. But no. that will eventually change. And I think that you have to continue to, to, to what your vision, what you're feeling right now, put it out there, put that, yeah. put it out there, write it down, put your goals out there. Because when you get distracted, you can always go back to saying, yeah, I'm in the weeds right now, but this is really what I was true to myself here because I didn't have all those distractions. Yeah. And I think if you can continuously go back to that, continuously go back to that vision or those dreams or, or, you know, they have dream boards or, I mean, Ethan yeah. has this, you know, freaking dream board and he, you know, we do things to, to, you know, have that vision in front of us so we don't get distracted Yeah. because you really, you only get one life, dude. Oh, I know. One yeah. life to live. You only get one shot at this. And you don't know when it's going to end. And you don't know when the expiration date is, yep. right? And so you have to continue just to understand that there's no expiration. We don't know when it's, when the, when your time's done. What stamp do you want to put in this ball of mud today Yeah. that other people can go, man, that David, he was different. He did this, he did this, he did this. And the last thing I'd do, say, would is take care of people. 
Yeah. Don't do business the way that takes advantage of people. Yeah. Do it the right way. Yeah. Be have selfless. Some, have some standards, right, with what you do and how you conduct yourself. And you do, because I mean, yeah. I've known you. So I think that's key, man. Be true to yourself. Have your vision. Know exactly what it is. So when you get distracted by life, you can always go back to that. And then be a be a good friend. Take care of people. Yeah, and I love that. That's that's a value I definitely strive myself on is serving others. Like my I always come second. I I, I don't want to say that in a bad way, but like if I can help someone out today, if I can buy someone Starbucks behind me, or if I I love doing that stuff. I love doing that stuff, and I don't want to go into too much about what I do for other people because. When it when you sit here and tell people about all the things and what what who are you really doing it for the camera or the and that's that's what I that's why I don't like post TikToks about what it and all these guys do that and I think it's good but I think it's bad too because they're doing it for clout some of them aren't but they're doing it for the video they're doing it for success of themselves so I think it it, it plays hand in hand I don't know it's a touchy subject for me mm -hmm. um, but getting back on track the quote the quote that I would have to say resonates with me most for whatever audience is watching whoever is watching is never take advice from someone not living the life you want to live um that's something that i had to realize that was a huge paradigm shift and when i say paradigm shift like a huge mental mental boom like why am i taking advice from my teacher who's making and i don't want to say this in a bad way but making fifty thousand dollars a year driving to work every day going or do i want to take advice from someone who's making millions of dollars a year most of their work is passive most of their most of their systems and operations are using technology mm -hmm. so it's a new faster sped up convenience just all these things they're just they've built this machine that just brings them in money so who 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 do i want to build from my teacher or and that's that's the big thing at my age like i will not take advice from someone i believe that i do not want to end up where they are Man, I think this is probably one of it's. I know it's the longest episode that we've had because I got the mark from Tyler quite a bit ago. But <laughs> this flew this flew way quicker than any of the other ones. I really enjoyed this this conversation. So thank you so much, David. Man, I love you, dude. Seriously. Yeah. Happy birthday, buddy. Yeah, happy birthday. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time.